Hi everyone and welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video and also my first Kingdom Death Monster painting guide. For this first video I'll be painting the White Lion. As you can see I started off by filling the numerous scaffs with green stuff before giving the lion a two-tone prime, grey from below and white from above at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to start off by painting the body of the lion using two different colors. For all the parts of the body that ended up grey I'll be using pure Xandri dust. For the white areas I'll be using a roughly 4 to 1 mix of white scar and Xandri dust. If you're not really a fan of mixing your colors and trying to match them again later, the lighter color ended up looking almost exactly like you shaved bone. So the entire underside of the lion is going to get a coat or two of Xandri dust. There's also a lot of large muscles that ended up partially in shadow that will get the same color. I apologize that the grey and white are hard to distinguish on camera, but if you prime it this way yourself it's very easy to see. If you don't prime it this way, then you can pretty easily guess where the shadow would be. Now one mistake I will point out that you can avoid is that the liquid green stuff shrank considerably after it dried, so some of the gaps are still visible. I've always used regular green stuff in the past and this wasn't a problem, so just a heads up if you're using the liquid version. The bottom half of the face ended up in shadow and the eyes as well. And finally I'm painting the inside of the ears. It's a good idea to use at least two colors or more on something that has such a large area that's the same. Next I'm switching to the lighter color, my White Scar and Xandri Dust mix. I'm using this for the rest of the lion's body. Where the light and the dark colors meet, I'm going to wet blend the two colors together right on the lion's body. You could use a slow dry medium to make this easier, but I'll save that for the highlighting stage. Right now I'm just going to switch back and forth between the two colors and just muddle them together where they meet. The main thing you want to do is make sure there's no harsh lines that draw the eye. I am going to be extra careful with the face. This is the main focal point. It's the first place people are going to look, so I want the color transition nice and smooth. Already the line is looking pretty good. I'll give that a few minutes to dry so I don't accidentally rub off any paint while doing the rest of his body. Next I'm going to move on to the lion's mane. I'm using three colors for this. The primary color will be Baylor Brown. For the highlight color I'll be using a 50-50 mix of White Scar and Baylor Brown. For all the grey areas of the mane I'm going to be using XV88. I'm using a wet palette for this but it's definitely not necessary. I mostly use one just to keep my paint from drying out and because it's easy to clean up afterwards. So starting with the darkest color, XV88, I'm painting all of the grey area, which is the bottom third of the mane. My paint is about 2 to 1 paint and water. I'm keeping it pretty thin so it doesn't clog up the mane and cause a loss of detail. I'm then painting the rest of the mane with Baylor Brown. Once again I'm wet blending the two colors together, and this is easy to do with fur. You can get away with just mashing your brush in the area where the colors meet. Obviously I'm using a brush I don't care about for this. The one I'm using right now is a cheap plastic brush I got for a dollar. On the top half of the mane and around the face I'm going to use my brightest brown color for some highlighting and I'm being careful not to let this color run down into the gaps. I'm just focusing on the raised parts of the fur. I'm doing two to three thin layers of this color on top of the head and around the face. Once the lion's mane is done I'm going to repeat this process on the tuft of fur on the lion's tail. Here's how the line is looking so far. Next up is the inside of the mouth. For this I'll be using tanned flesh with just a little bit of screamer pink added. After painting the inside of the mouth I realized I hadn't painted the gums of the lion. So on the outside of the mouth all around the teeth I used Xandri dust. Though I did consider using the same flesh color as the inside of the mouth or even a darker brown. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks, so next I'm painting the teeth with Screaming Skull.
For the claws, I'm using a one-to-one -one mix of a Baden Black and Skaven Blight Dinge. I'm using this same color mix to paint the nose of the lion. And I'm being super careful here because touching up black with a light paint would probably take two to three layers and I've already tossed out my fur colors. Next I'm making a wash using equal parts Seraphim Sepia, Agrax Earthshade, and Lamian Medium. I'm going to use this wash in the entire body of the lion, including the mouth and teeth. Seraphim Sepia has a really strong staining effect, so if you don't want too much pooling on the top of your lion, you can first go over his back with a damp brush. This will reduce how much wash will settle there. The reason I'm using a medium here instead of water is because water causes more heavy pooling, while a medium gives a more even coverage. Before I start highlighting, I'm going to paint the eyes of the lion. That way if I make any mistakes, I can just cover them up with my highlight colors. For the eyes, I'm first laying down a base coat of Mephiston Red. After that, I'm going to make a small circle in the eye using Wild Rider Red. And finally, I'll use P3's Hearthfire to make a tiny glowing pupil. I can't show you all three steps because I needed to get really close to the line to paint the iris and pupil, but this is what it looked like when I was finished. The next step is to highlight the fur. The mane already looks great as far as I'm concerned, so I won't be touching that. For the body of the lion, however, I'm mixing up two shades of brown using Xandri Dust and White Scar. The first color is nearly going to match the new color of the lion, but just a bit brighter. The second color is going to be slightly brighter for the upper highlights and the face. Now I had to play around with these colors a bit to get them just right. Just test a small patch on your lion and let it dry to see if it looks right and you're good to go. For myself, the first highlight was roughly 3 to 1 white scar to Xandri dust, and the second highlight color was about a 4 to 1 mix. It really depends on how dark your lion got after your wash. So you can see here I'm just tracing around the muscles and ribs with my first tone. Later I'll go back with a lighter tone and paint this onto the upper part of the body. At this point my paint is about half paint and half water with one drop of slow dry medium. I'm also using the lighter tone for the face, just the top third or so. I'm focusing most of the paint onto the cheeks, around the eyes, and the top of the nose. The next highlight will be on the claws and the nose. Starting with the claws, I'm using a mix of Skaven Blight Dinge and some Lamian Medium. Then I'm doing a final edge highlight by mixing in some Filthy Suit from Army Painter. For the nose, I'm just using this lighter highlight, painting around the nostrils so they're more visible. And the final color I'll be using is Vallejo's Ivory. I'm using this to highlight the edges and the tips of the teeth. Once this is done, I'm moving on to the base. I won't spend a lot of time talking about the base. I'm using the exact same technique I used on my Desert Wasteland base video. The only difference was adding a stick I found in the yard to look like a broken tree branch. I didn't add any paint to the stick, I just stuck it in the Vallejo earth and used that as the glue to hold it down. If you're interested in the rest of the details of how the base was made, I'll post a link to that video in the description below. And here's the finished product. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and thank you very much for watching.